Finesse Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. I hope and trust I find you all, my dear friends. We are on the series, the old time religion, and we consider the someone titled The Two Prayers. The Two Prayers. We find this in the book of 2 Kings. We want to look at chapter 6 and begin at verse 11. The Bible reads as follows. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of the servants said, None, my lord or king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, Surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike these people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we pray that he may give us according to our prayers this morning. Let us pray. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, how we pray, dear Lord, that you may open our eyes, that we may see that which you have prepared for us. Open our eyes so that we may appreciate that which you have taken us through. We have been through a lot. There has been many a trap that has been set before our paths, but you have seen us through. Open our eyes, dear Lord. Open our eyes, dear Lord that we may come to value the relationship we have with you. You are our protector. You are our sustainer. You are our provider. You are our redeemer and savior. May we see you as such. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask. Amen. My friends, just allow me to raise our, as our custom is, our usual five points. And I want us to notice something here, just a background. What has been happening? The king of Syria has been setting up traps, hoping to catch the Israelites while they are sleeping, while they are napping. And Elisha will then convey a message to the king to say, do not go in this direction. The king of Syria has set a camp in that direction. Do not go in this way because the king of Syria intends to attack you. And when he now realizes that he is failing, in spite his intel to catch them. He then turns and says, who is for the king of Israel? Now he is told there is somebody who tells the king of Israel what happens in your bedroom. We know this part. But what do I want to bring to you at point number one? The folly of unbelief. When you have just been told there is someone who tells the king of Israel not only your plans, but what happens in your bedroom. Then you proceed to plan on how you are going to capture this person. How do you capture someone who has been spreading, leaking your intel without any effort? Will he not know what you're planning? This is the folly of unbelief. It makes a scheme against those who know it all. It makes a scheme against the children of God who are protected. It makes a scheme even against heaven itself. When we are not people of faith, when we do not believe in the Lord God Almighty, 
this is what is going to happen. We begin to scheme against heaven and we think we're going to victor. We're going to prosper. I want to challenge you this morning. Reconsider the schemes that you have set in place, especially if you intend to undo the children of God. At point number two, when they have come together, what do they do? Chariots have been sent out and the horsemen have been sent out. They get there and they encompass the whole city. As they encompass the whole city, the first person to notice that there's something amiss is the servant of the man of God. As he comes out, he finds that they are encompassed and he cries aloud, Alas, master, what shall we do? His immediate response is a response of panic and fear. And those of us who are not in a direct relationship with God, but maybe we are in a relationship with those who are following God. Proximity does not breed faith. Proximity does not breed uh, a calmness of spirit. This particular young lad is so perturbed. His spirit is overwhelmed. There is a whirlwind in his mind and body, and he does not know what to do. As he cries out, what shall we do? That particular fear that is within is allowed to be echoed out. When we cry out and say, what shall we do? Fear has gotten the better of us. Faith has disappeared. We cannot assume a position of faith by proximity. It only comes as a result of a relationship with God. Only as we relate to God will we come to be people of faith. I love point number three. Elisha then comes to prayer number one. How I pray that we may all have a portion in the first prayer. Elisha says, do not fear. And he prays this prayer, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. As Elisha makes this prayer, how I pray this can be the prayer that can be offered over many a Christian whose faith is running low, over many a Christian who is in panic mode. We are so fixated on what is not working around us. We are fixated on the enemies and the chariots that encompass us. And we forget that he who is with us is more than those who are against us. Only if our eyes could see that the Lord is on our side. Only if our eyes could learn that the Lord is in control. Elisha says, do not fear. And I want to repeat this. Do not fear. Child of God, have faith. The Lord is in control. He has sent out a whole legion to come out in your defense. As the young man's eyes are opened, here's something that I want you to notice at point number four. God protects his own. They have brought in a lot of horsemen and chariots. But when you come to heaven, heaven does not count one, two, three, four, five. Heaven counts in terms of heels. And the Bible says the heel was full of horsemen on chariots of fire. The Syrians had come with horsemen and chariots, but no fire. When God comes through for his children, he comes with fire. I strongly believe it is the same chariot that Elisha saw as it took off Elijah in a whirlwind. And these particular chariots are now around him and his men servant. And he says, behold what the Lord has done for us. Behold how far the Lord will go for our protection. God sends out an entire hill. God sends out an entire assembly of chariots, men, angels. As these angels are out there, as I've mentioned earlier, remember he says the cattle upon a thousand hills are the Lord's. The Lord counts with hills, not with singular numbers. So he cannot even count. He says, how many of these can fit on one hill? I'll just show you one hill. These are all the chariots that can fit on one hill and they're ready to protect you. As if that is not enough. This was just a parade. God showing off. Because he does not even need all those. If you fast forward to 2 Kings chapter 19, you find that the children of Israel were under attack. An angel, just one angel, was sent out. And in one night, he dealt with 185,000 
of those who were assailing the children of God. When God needs to fight, he goes before us as the book of Deuteronomy says, and he fights our enemies and the victors over them. And now he sends out a whole army on standby. He will not even use this army. Come with me to prayer number two. At prayer number two, these people now come down to Dothan to capture Elisha. Elisha makes the second prayer and he says, Lord, strike these people, I pray, with blindness. And immediately they were struck with blindness. The rest is history. When they are struck with blindness, I want to say, oh Lord, may this not be my portion. May I retain my eyesight so that I will continue to see especially how you have been merciful towards me so that I will continue to have my faith grow in leaps and bounds as I bask in your protection, as I continue to follow in your footsteps, oh dear Lord. May blindness not be my portion, for some of us have been blind for a long time. We can only become doubly blind should you strike us with blindness. But dear Lord, give us eyes so that we may see you. For our song in the deepest of our hearts is face to face with Christ my Savior. How we long to look upon your face. How we long to experience you in today. How we long to have this old time religion of an unadulterated faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in the Lord who protects us. The faith of our forefathers that is held still from time immemorial and continues into the bright and unknown forever. This has been my prayer and it continues to be my prayer over your life and my life. What have I said unto you this morning, my dear friends? Point number one, God against the folly of attacking the plan of heaven. Heaven is even aware of the things you plan in your bedroom. Number two, let not fear and panic be your default response. Let faith be your default response and pray that your eyes may be opened for prayer one, is our hope and longing. Let our eyes be opened because God, at point number four, protects his own. And lastly, may we not receive the curse of blindness. Until we meet again, may God bless and prosper you. Amen.